in the previous topic we have learned about vector addition and in that topic it was said that when in the parallelogram law if two adjacent sides represent two vectors in magnitude and direction which are acting at a certain angle from a certain point then the magnitude of their resultant is this from this expression there comes three options for different values of alpha zero that means the two vectors act in the same direction alpha is equal to 180 degree that means the two vectors act in opposite directions 180 degree in opposite directions then the value of resultant is p difference q that means which one is greater is to be put first and when they are mutually perpendicular then the resultant value is this and also the angle with which the resultant vector x is this now if the its value its cal the calculation of this value depends on the reference if the reference of direction is with p vector then this one and if the reference is with q vector and if this angle if this resultant vector acts at an angle of beta with q then the angles expression is this now what about the third law that is polygon law Suppose uh, this may be happened, suppose an object and it is being tried to pull by different forces coming from different directions. Suppose this is a stone and this is a stone and some cranes are there, some cranes are there. And these cranes tries to pull this heavy object. So there are multiple forces act simultaneously on this object. Then we have to calculate their resultant vectors, their resultant force. For this, there is a theoretical idea and a practical approach. What is that theoretical idea? That theoretical idea is the polygon law. Suppose these are the forces acting from a certain point. Suppose this force is denoted by A vector, this is B vector, this is C vector and this is D vector. First, we have to open all these forces from each other and they have to be placed along the consecutive sides of a polygon. Which are taken in same order. Suppose this is the A vector, this is B, this is C and this is D. Then the closing side, this part was empty at first. So this is the closing side, which is to be taken in opposite order and then that will signify the value of their resultant vector. So if we
if we consider certain names here, then theoretically it will be like this AB plus BC vector plus CD vector plus DE vector is equal to AE vector. The sum of all these vectors, that means the combination of all these vectors is this. So, the statement is like this, when a number of vectors acting simultaneously, if are represented in magnitude and direction by the consecutive sides of a polygon taken in same order, then the closing side of the same polygon taken in opposite order will represent their the magnitude and direction of their resultant vector. You can prove this by using the triangle law. If we frame three triangles like this, then from this triangle you can write AB plus BC is equal to AC, AB plus BC is equal to AC, from this AC plus CD is equal to AD and AB plus DE is equal to AE. Now when you add all these relations then from left side and right side these quantities will be cancelled out. So ultimately the leftover is this and this and this and this which will make the relation and we have said that the, there is a there is a practical approach which actually is used for solving numerical problems we will discuss that later By using polygon law, previously I have said that in the types of vectors, at last there is a there was a vector called position vector, and which is to discuss yet because after discussing polygon law, it will be much easier to understand that. Suppose. This is a three dimensional frame. This is x axis, y axis, and z axis. And in this space here, this is a three dimensional space. Here, there is a point. Suppose I mean, a to draw a column, but this actually stays here. And you have to move that point from this origin. And for that, suppose you have to move x distance along x axis, y distance along y axis and you have to move upwards by z distance along z axis to reach that point P suppose. So its coordinate is x, y, z. Now if you complete the Q by using all these directions we have to redraw the diagram.
this is the origin or the starting point and from this origin at first you move by small x distance then you move along this direction by y distance and then you move upwards by y distance to reach this point p so its coordinate is x y z this is this x y z indicates the position of this point in the three dimensional space now <coughs> If you join this point to that point, before that, take this part separately. Take this part separately. It looks like that kind of polygon. We previously drew that like this one, this, 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 this. Here there are four sides, but here there are only three sides. That's okay. Now, the order is exactly identical like this. And in that law, we have read that the closing side will be their resultant vector. So if we close this polygon, then this will be, which is taken in opposite order, will be their resultant vector. So, here we have to close this. This one. So, now, previously we have learned that for a vector to express completely, we need a magnitude and a direction also. So if we write the polygon law in this case, then we have to name it first. So O A plus AB plus BP is equal to the closing side in opposite order that is OP. Now to express this vector we need a magnitude and a direction. Suppose the unit vectors acting in all these axes are i cap j cap and k cap so oa vector is equal to its magnitude that is x small x into the unit vector i cap plus AB that is Y into J cap plus Z into K cap is equal to if we assume that the resultant vector is R so this expression is a kind of concept which represents a point's location in a three-dimensional frame. So this kind of vector is called position vector. Position vector, a vector which explains, defines the position of a point in a space. Now we draw the polygon here again. So we have to calculate this, the value of this R vector, which is actually the resultant of these three vectors. The relation was OA vector plus AB vector plus BP vector is equal to OP vector. 
सो ऑल वेक्टर इज इक्वल टू एक्स आई कैप प्लस वाई जे कैप प्लस जे के कैप दिस टाइप ऑफ एक्सप्रेशन ऑलवेज इज कॉल्ड पोजिशन वेक्टर इन न्यूमेरिकल प्रॉब्लम लेटर यू विल सी लाइक दिस वन a vector a is equal to 3i cap plus 5j cap minus 7k cap like this one that means you move by 3 units along x axis by 5 units along z axis and by 7 units along negative z axis by 5 units along y axis and by 7 units along negative z axis So this R is actually the diagonal of this room. If you consider this one as a room, this is a side wall, this is another side wall, that wall is the wall behind and this one is the front wall, this is the roof and so the ceiling and this is the floor. If you consider this one as a room, then this is the diagonal from that farthest corner to this front corner. So in cuboid, the value of diagonal is under root length square plus width square plus height square. That means the values of this are like this one. So x square plus y square plus j square. This gives the value of the position vector. J example like an idea of 3i cap plus 5j cap minus 7k cap. So a is equal to without vector means this is the magnitude under root 9 plus 25 plus 49 and calculating that whatever that is. That is. Now the direction in which direction this resulting vector will act. To find that, previously we have learned that to, to find out a direction, we have to make a reference. This is the resultant of these three vectors. You can make the reference of any one out of these three. Suppose this vector makes an angle of alpha with x axis or x vector then if you join these two points a and p out of this triangle this angle is 90 degree this is something odd to understand why it is it becomes easier if you consider again this as a room now this is the front wall this A, B, P, F, this is the front wall and this dotted line is on this front wall and this axis is on this side wall. So every wall in a room are making 90 degree with each other. So this is the front wall where this dotted line stays and this x-axis is along the side wall. So obviously this dotted line is making an angle of 90 degree with this x. Because two walls are there, two walls are there. If you draw any line, that line also makes 90 degree with this one. So this angle in two-dimensional frame, it will be much difficult to understand that it is 90 degree, but it is 90 degree. So if it is 90 degree, then it is a right angle triangle and this will be the hypotenuse, this is the base and this is perpendicular. In the diagram, it is very funny to see that this seems to be hypotenuse, but that is not. So in this triangle, if we write cos alpha, then we have to write OA by OP, that is x by R. 
x by under root this expression. Similarly, someone tries to accept that this resultant vector makes an angle of beta with y axis. Then again cos beta is equal to for this one you have to join this so then obviously that angle will be 90 degree so this is the base and this is the hypotenuse so y by r that is y by under root and if someone assumes that this resultant vector makes an angle of uh, suppose gamma with z axis then cos gamma is equal to z upon r is equal to these three expressions are called direction cosines you will read this in mathematics also direction cosines because these are certain expressions of cosines which indicates the direction of the resultant vector now difference between two vectors up to this we have learned that how two vectors or more than two vectors can be combined together addition means combination in this case of vector but if we have to subtract one vector from another suppose these are two vectors p vector and q vector and this is the resultant r vector so actually from sense this r is the combination of these two vectors and if this is alpha then we have learned that r this one but if this q vector acts in opposite direction you if you have to find this one understand clearly that in vector no subtraction can be performed no subtraction can be performed you have to do everything